Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome to the press beta of Kerbal Space Program 0.18. We're going to take a look at some of the changes, including that, which is freaking cool. I love that so much. So, this is going to require a fresh install. None of your mods, none of your old saves are going to work. I don't think old saves work, at least. And, um... It's actually completely different from 0.17.1, which is a very good thing. If we take a trip into the vehicle assembly building, you'll see everything's been reorganized. The whatever this is called, the thing that lets you choose whether you want to do it circular or octagonal. <laughs> uh, I'll be able to find out as soon as I choose a command pod. And there are so many more command pods as well. Like the MK2 lander can, which allows two people to be in there, which is great. And um, I think there's actually, I've actually just noticed this option, which is minimum crew to operate. So presumably there's going to be some things where you're going to require more than one person or to operate it. That is going to pose some interesting challenges. But anyway, let's take a quick look at some stuff. I know we don't want that one. So if we go back, take our regular command pod, the parts have been completely reorganized which is both a good thing and a bad thing because everything feels so much more professional now and looks so neat and tidy but I can't remember where half my old parts are <laughs> which is pretty annoying in some cases but um yeah yeah I'll make do so one of the most one of the biggest things I've noticed in terms of things being reorganized is the fact that the all the aero associated parts are now put within the aero tab which is an interesting idea and i think it's one that's been that was probably made as soon as they did the opposite <laughs> because you don't really use standard control surfaces in any other place than space planes so one thing that I'm sure is all on your mind is docking. Now, I do not have time to go through everything to do with the updated version. You can have multiple command pods. Well, that's, that's amazing. But I don't have time to go through every single new part and all that. Might do eventually, but the press release is actually a limited thing, I believe. So, let's build ourselves a simple ship and go into the flight menu and see what has been changed. And in the process of building a simple ship, we find this. The Mark 25 parachute, which is more of a drogue parachute, as in it's not intended to stop you from smashing into the ground, but it does help slow you down and tilt you in the correct direction, if you want that. So we're just going to go with the standard parachute. It hasn't changed much. The decouplers, everything's got new textures. That is a big decoupler. <laughs> everything's got new textures, I believe. You can see those are actually thinner which is a nice addition, because they did seem unnecessarily big, I think. Let's add ourselves onto... This is the uh, the new tank. God, look at that. This, just looking at that gets me excited. Let's make ourselves a standard rocket, eh? Let's make ourselves a standard rocket. So if we take the 400 fuel tank, which is our standard thing, and before no noting how different it looks, we'll actually take the SES module, which also looks very different. <laughs> Stedler Corp. That's the, actually the company that made it. And let's slap ourselves on with... See if we can get a new engine. There is a new engine somewhere. This is ridiculously small because you can have unmanned probes now, which is nice. If you look here, there are some unmanned probes, such as satellite cores, pro probo body knee, I think that says. I, I don't know. Let's see if there's any new engines. The liquid this is actually a retexture of the regular vectoring engine so we'll use that looks beautiful and one thing that is absolutely wonderful i used to have it in a mod until i got rid of it for reasons now we have the shrouds absolutely brilliant shrouds are so useful ridiculously useful in fact love them love them love them love them okay then Let's see, let's put on that tricoupler, retext tricoupler, shall we? Come on, come here. Click and move. And we'll see if we can add some different fuel tanks on. Are there any different fuel tanks? Or have they just been retextured? That's another thing that's hard to tell. That's the half fuel tank of that. And that is the half fuel tank of the big one. There we go. Okay then. 
Let's get ourselves some regular fuel tanks. Oh, no, there we go. New fuel tank. I thought there was a new one. Slightly taller, slightly more capacity and all that. Here we go. Very nice. Your ships will look very different after you recreate them. I can tell you that. How much does this hold? Oxidizer and the regular hydrogen liquid fuel have now been separated. Which is something they were severely lacking. Seeing as if you're recreating a realistic space simulator, then that is important. Very important. Let's put, I don't know, two loads of these and see how we go with that. Bearing in mind, this is my first impressions of the game. I haven't really... I mean, I've been in it. I've flown around a little, but not all that much. So here we go. Some new engines. We use we use the standard engines. Haven't used these in a while. There we go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And what is all the nonsense on... Well, let's take a look at here first. Decoupling and coupling is actually handled from the utility aisle. Now, you'll notice that the utility tab used to just be like parachutes and landing legs and things. It's now got so many more things. So many more parts have been added. Like the hitchhiker storage container. <laughs> which is basically my crew cabin thing that I used to make in a mod. So that's going to be extremely useful indeed. Um, what's this? Two separate vessels. So you can actually... Now there was something. Oh yes, here we go. Right. I'm not going to do it here because this isn't orbital war worthy. I don't think, unless these tanks are actually useful. I'm actually good for that kind of thing. But now we have a structural component called the multi-point connector, which gives you several different sides that you can put docking ports onto. There's actually a video on screen right now, which is Operation DX's highlight of the Point 18 press release, because uh, he is also... Oh, I mean, he's got so many more subscribers than we have that uh, obviously he would be a, a pick preferable to me. But um, he has done his brief overview of Point 18, which I recommend you go watch. I certainly should have paid more attention before doing this video, but I've got limited time. So he shows a docking thing, which is what I'm sure you all want to do. I want to go do Apollo, but not yet. We need to get into the flight scene, because this video can't be too long, because I've got so many different ones I want to record. I think this is standard enough. This is standard enough. We have loads of parts, though. Loads of parts. What are these? It's just a strut. It's just it's just a strut you can put on the side. That's brilliant. You can actually build scaffolding. Let's build, our, let's build ourselves some scaffolding. Why don't we? Here we go. Scaffolding time. Just put just put some of this on. Go to the side. There we go. Scaffolding. Scaffold. Oh, that is a big scaffold, man. And there's that. God. <laughs> Let, let's not mess with scaffolding until we understand it a bit more. Come on. Let's get into this. Just going to add some winglets. Which are now probably going to be in the aero category. Yes, indeed. Where are the standard winglets? Here we go. Deluxe winglets. Let's use these. These sound much more impressive. There we go. Beautiful. And of course, we can't be without our launch clamps. Which look pretty much the same, I believe. Yep. Pretty much the same. Alright, beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's get to launching this ship. Now, there's been changing, to, changing, uh, changes to stages. Changes to stages. In that you'll notice that all the parts we've used aren't actually showing up. That's because they've made it more minimalistic. I love saying that word. <laughs> and only the activating parts, as in the useful parts, like engines and decouplers and recouplers in the case of docking ports and things like that. Those are the only things you'll see in the staging, which is a drastic improvement, I believe. Let's call this... Let's call this first ever, because this is the first ever ship I've built in the game. And let's have a look at the flight scenario. I, I didn't build that. That that was... Uh, just come on. <laughs> it's actually a stock ship, and they haven't been changed at all much. Which is a shame, because I wanted to see how to implement the new ion engines and things. With concerns to fuel, yes, oxidizer and liquid hydrogen have been separated. So we get the readouts for the two different ones. Man, look at this. Look at this. And in addition to that, uh, what's been added? Electricity has also been added. Up here we have our resources tab. 
and we can see that as soon as we hover over one of these, we get different loadouts which tell us how everything is doing. So if we look at the electricity, the electrical, uh, the command pods, command pods generate electricity. So it's currently 50 out of 50, which I presume will go back up once you use some. Uh, SAS modules actually use a little, I think. Do they? I don't know, I guess we'll find out. Uh, liquid fuel, we can see that, and oxidizer, we can see that. More oxidizer than fuel. That's something basically you need to know. Stage only, what does this mean? Not entirely sure about that. But anyway, let's get into flying. The game has been optimized yet again, which I am extremely happy about. You'll see that the topography of Kerbin, either the to topography's actually been changed, or the textures. I think what might have been changed is just the textures, to be honest. Look at that. Now oh, that is a cool sight. Very cool indeed. <laughs> now you'll notice when we detach, this shroud actually disappears. Well, it doesn't disappear, but, you know, it comes off, which is great. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. So, let's re-enable the UI. Now, what's up here? I think we can select gears and things from up here. So, if I had any gears, they would automatically open and close. Lights. Landing lights have been added. I haven't had time to play with them. Damn, I should have added them to this ship, shouldn't I? Oh, well. Come on, let's finish getting to orbit so we can have some time to talk. And firing. <laughs> oh, wait. Not steady. Not steady at all. There we go. Right, let's have a look at the map view. Ooh, very high. We'll get into a polar orbit at 180. Wonderful. Time warping. I'm not sure if they've changed the boundaries for time warp. But there was some discussion as to that. But I'm not entirely... I don't entirely remember what the response to the myths that they have been changed was. But um, there was... I think they might have changed it. Slightly. There we go. Got into our orbit. And we're going over the poles very soon. So we might get that camera switch. Is there anything else I can highlight in this video? Because it's gone on for long enough. This is just a brief thing. Basically saying, look at this! It is amazing! Kerbal Space Program 0.18 is one of the best updates yet, I think. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I actually have a Steam community group set up if you'd like to join that. The uh, the HTTP, uh, the URL for that is in the description. And I can assure you, I will be playing Kerbal Space Program almost, almost to it till it kills me. This is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Okay, guys, I'm going to go away and record a more informative video. I do apologise if this wasn't particularly interesting. It was just kind of me having an orgasm. I'll see you next time.